Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, this is going to be a perfect painting for my first time painters. Um, this kind of swirly tree with crazy background. If you are the painting at home for the first time, this painting is for you. You will get good practice with your brushes. You'll get kind of comfortable with some of your blending and we will get into a little bit of the layering of our paint. As we go through this painting, in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting. Um, so check that out, uh, grab the supplies that you need and kind of pick up this video again. With this video and any video in my channel, you have full permission to swap out colors, to change stuff, to paint something completely different. That is what we call creative freedom. So if you are inclined to do that, go right ahead. Um, with this being my first time painter video, as you go through the process, I want you to be kind to yourself. Relax. I'm going to remind you to take deep breaths, um, but just enjoy the process. This is not meant to be perfect. This is not meant to go into a museum. If it does, awesome. But this is just meant for you to uh, kind of find a creative source at home and hopefully you enjoy it enough that you're going to try some of the other videos on the channel. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or send me an email paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm really enjoying how this channel is growing and I want to help you as much as I can. So, all right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into painting. All right, guys, this is going to be a really fun painting. Head on over to where you have your supplies and turn on your favorite music. And as always, take your progress photos. Now, today's painting is actually going to be a lot of fun, especially for my first time painters, because you get to be really abstract and pretty crazy with the background. So we're going to use a large flat brush or medium flat brush, and we're going to make a light yellow. So that's going to be white with some yellow. Each one of you is going to have a different shade. That's okay. Now, as we paint, I want you to try three different brush strokes. Try the wide brush stroke or turning your brush sideways for the skinny brush stroke or the cross hatching, which is just basically X marks going back and forth. Try all of these and whichever one that you find the most comfortable, stick with that and play with it. For this painting, I'm actually going to be using the X marks, the cross hatching. And we're going to kind of start in the center and we're going to be radiating out a variety of colors. As we go through this, don't stress about your colors being absolutely perfect. And if you prefer one color to another or you don't want a color, feel free to admit, omit them and change it and switch up colors. You have full permission to do that. So here I've kind of gone back and forth between a light yellow and even yellow, kind of creating this abstract shape. You can mimic this shape or put it in different spots on your canvas. And when I'm adding the yellow, I am overlapping some of the lighter yellow and we'll kind of keep with this theme as we go through the full painting of the background. All right, here I grabbed a little bit of white, painted right on top of it to create a bit of a lighter space. As you paint today, I want you to trust your instincts. If you feel like finger painting today, go right ahead. But just enjoy the process of moving paint on the canvas. All right, so here I took a little bit of orange and added it to the yellow and white mixture I was already using. And still using those X marks and the cross hatching, I'm going to I'm going to surround this yellow blob, this yellow amoeba looking space. And you'll notice as they cross, the yellow is blending in with that kind of sherbet light orange. This is what we call wet on wet blending. Play with it. It's a lot of fun. If you need to wipe your brush off every now and then when you're doing the blending, go right ahead and do that. And still continuing to kind of carry that orangish yellow color. 
above. Oh, here we go. If you want to finger paint, it's kind of fun to blend your shades that way too. Acrylic paint is non-toxic and just wash your hands with soap and water afterwards. But there's something rather tactile about touching the paint. So if you're inclined to do it, go right ahead. So now grabbing a bit more of the orange, adding it to the top left-hand side of this blob that we're creating as an abstract painter. And adding it in a few areas. Again, if you want more of this color, less of this color, adjust to what you need and want on your canvas. All right, so now we're adding a, a touch of red into that orange mixture we were using. This kind of makes a burnt orange. And we're going to focus this in that bottom left-hand corner, still overlapping the orange. So in order to kind of have these colors blend, you do have to paint your background kind of quick. Um, acrylic paint generally dries in about 20 minutes. So to do this fast of blending, you do want big chunky strokes. You want to kind of glob your paint on there and work a little bit faster than you may be comfortable with. Otherwise, you will have kind of dry and sharper edges between your colors. That's perfectly okay. You can always paint this painting a second or third time and speed up your process or slow it down. And right here I grabbed a little bit of white just to kind of blend that in between the red and the yellow that I was using because it was a pretty harsh jump. And again, as we paint this, don't stress out or fall in love with any one area of your painting. The composition will be a bit more set when we put the silhouette of our tree on there. So again, right now you're just an abstract painter moving paint on a canvas. All right, so I'm cleaning the brush really good. We're gonna move into our cool colors at the top of our canvas. And you definitely don't want some of your warm colors mixing with your cool colors. And you'll see when we get to the point where some of the blue goes over the yellow. All right, so we're gonna go into light blue. So pull some white aside, a touch of blue, and still sticking with those X marks. And again, that's a little darker than I wanted, so I added some white on top of it. The blue will mix actually really nicely when you come up to the red, but when you come up to the yellow, it's actually gonna make green. So be kind of cautious or just careful with your brush strokes as your blue starts to come up next to your yellow. And here started with the light blue and then added some darker blue in that top corner. Now we're gonna add a little bit of purple in there for some periwinkle. There we go. Again, adjust and a play with whatever you want this to be. And my warm colors are starting to dry. So my blue is going on a bit more opaque on top of that red. Now I'm grabbing some white with some teal. I still have some of the purple on my brush, so it's not quite a true teal. But again, feel free to make this whatever you want it to be. And putting more of the straight teal, the darker teal, in the top left-hand corner. Again, being careful when you come up to the yellow, just because it will make green. We will have a, um, I think a chunk of our tree branch going over this area, kind of distracting the viewer from this line of non-blending between the blue and the yellow. And again, while your paint is wet, add any blues or purples or colors that you want. So that way you can do that blending while your paint is wet. Again, less is more. So if you get to a point where you really like your background, let it dry and then move into the silhouette of the tree. All right, if you do go back to your yellow, you're gonna clean your brush really good. And here you can see where the yellow and the blue are starting to make a little haze of green. It reminds me of the green flash of the California sunsets over the water. Just that quick little hint of green where the two colors meet. 
Again, don't stress out about anything. Take your progress picture and let this dry for a little bit before you move into your black silhouette. So that way you don't have any colors mixing with it. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, and let your painting dry before we move into the black paint. And we're gonna be using that small flat brush, and we're gonna be building the structure of our tree, starting with the trunk. And this is kind of a gnarly, angular looking tree. You can make your tree anything that you want. Here, I kind of started about in the middle and made these odd angles as I reached the bottom. And then doing the same thing above it. Again, it can be really abstract. And again, this kind of very angular tree. If you want something a little more rounded, go right ahead and make that. And then we're gonna fill in the space and you can apply that paint kind of thick because you do want this silhouette to be dark. Reshape as needed as you're filling it in. And then after we fill in the tree trunk, we're going to be adding branches and then some smaller branches and twigs. And then we'll be adding our swirls. Make sure you're breathing. And just focus on moving the paint across the canvas. It is nice that while you're painting, you kind of forget that the world exists for a little bit and you get lost in this world of what you're making. That is the beauty of art. That is why everybody needs it. All right, pause the video, take a progress picture before you start adding your branches on. And I like to start where I want the branch to end and then just kind of draw this angular or curvy line back to the main tree trunk. And generally the branches do get a little thicker as they come back to the tree trunk, so you can thicken up that section, leaving the end a bit more, uh, a bit smaller. And your tree can kind of go off the edge of the canvas if you feel like it. You can add as few or as many branches as you want on your tree. Don't think too much, just paint. You're doing a great job. Just the fact that you're painting and going through the steps already makes you successful. I tell my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. All right, as you get into some of those twigs or smaller branches, lighter pressure with your brush. Kind of hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas and light pressure. And trees come in many shapes, sizes, varieties. Your, each one is unique. Your tree is unique to you. As you move into the branches, if you need to move down to the smaller brush, the pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. Again, mind your pressure. And I always love how just adding black silhouette of anything changes and defines that abstract background that you were just working on into something definite, something finite. Oh, yeah, here your branches can overlap other branches. That's perfectly natural, the way nature intended. And 
every now and then. Feel free to get out of your chair, look at your painting from a distance of 10 to 20 feet, kind of assess and go back and paint. When you look at it from that distance, that is the normal viewing distance for most things in life. So learning to look at your artwork from that distance is a healthy practice, a healthy habit to develop. Same with taking your progress photos. Your progress photos are awesome because in a year or two years or five years from now, you can go back and look at one of your first paintings and you have a visual documentation of how much fun you had, how much you have grown with all the paintings that you've done, and just kind of a nice way to see your own evolution. So take your progress pictures and remember to look at your artwork and really everything in life from a distance and don't take it too seriously. Nothing's worth taking that seriously, especially painting. So take a deep breath. You're doing a great job. This is turning into a really cool tree. If you do not want to add the swirls or the next step, or if you want to add leaves or hearts or circles, you have full permission to switch this up. All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture. I do recommend letting this dry before we do our swirls. And basically as we do our swirls, we're gonna go back to every color that we made in the background and go through the process of just making swirls or spirals or heart shapes. If you're making swirls, have them go in multiple directions. They can overlap the tree. They can overlap the other colors. And as you go through all these colors, what you're gonna notice is something pretty cool. You are using the same shade of paint, but it looks different when you overlap it on different colors. And that's what we call color theory. You interpret the color based on the color that's right next to it. And it's so cool how you can again have that exact same shade, but it's gonna look, this yellow is gonna look different on top of yellow. It's gonna look different on top of red. It's gonna look different on top of blue. Same shade, but based on the color that's next to it, we look at it differently. Many artists, myself included, have spent our entire careers, our entire lives, just playing with color theory. There's no right or wrong to it. Every single person's gonna interpret it differently, but it's something fun to play with. So again, you can move to all the colors that you used in your background, light teals, light purples, yellows, oranges, reds, overlap these, just have fun. You're using your small pointy brush, and again, play with that pressure of the brush. You can have some of these swirls uh, kind of go off the edge of the canvas. They can overlap each other. You can add dots, hearts, anything. At this point, you get to make it what you want. And I apologize for the auto-focusing. I'm not using that camera anymore. Um, and I appreciate all your support as I've grown over the last year from when I started the YouTube channel. Uh, all your feedback has been amazing. It's kept me going. I think there's 30 or 40 some odd videos. And I'll be launching the online class um, in the next couple of months. So really really appreciate your support and your encouragement and watching my video as my production has gotten better quality as i've gotten more comfortable with it it's been a fun ride so far all right so keep making your swirls only you know when you can stop on the swirls um, again as many colors as you want on there if you want to make it mixed media and start adding glitter or uh, buttons or cut out hearts, anything, make it your own. All right, and again, just so cool how it changes as different colors 
are next to each other. Different colors are placed on top of each other. Pretty cool. So great job. Thanks so much for painting today and taking time out of your day and spending it with me, let alone just painting. I'm really proud of you. Oh, there we go. I knew I got a heart in there somewhere. You can put a heart on your tree trunk or carve some initials in there. Whatever you like. All right, so great job. Until next time. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your swirly trees turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process. Um, I hope you're a little more relaxed now than you were at the beginning of the process. Uh, I know there was a few points that it can be kind of stressful, but just work through those and keep painting. As you upload these to social media, please tag me paint with lovejoy or hashtag paint with lovejoy. It really helps me move forward and make more videos uh, when I see that you guys are actually watching the videos and going through the process. If you have anything that you'd like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment below and um, I will work that into my playlist. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. And please share this with other people because this is the way um, things are spread. So if you had a good time, share this with somebody else that you think might enjoy it as well. So thank you guys so much for uh, taking time out of your day to paint with me. Like I said earlier, I hope you are more relaxed than you were uh, earlier today or last week. But please find a therapeutic outlet in your life on a regular basis. And until next time, Cheers. Went away for the plane.